Hello to everyone catching the replay. I just have to share this video in a few places and then we will begin. Hope everyone is having a great Friday. I actually literally just got in five minutes <laughs> before I pressed, um, before I press, you know, uh, a start broadcast. So I am working to get everything up. Just give me a moment, giving people time to hop on as well and then get us up on Instagram. Okay, I am up on Instagram. And so I'll just give me a moment to get it all shared out. Sorry for the typing. Like I said, normally <laughs> uh, this is all set up, but I literally just came in from an event and got in about five minutes ago. So I am still playing around. All right. I see that we have some people on Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and get started because I want to make sure that I still end by one o'clock or beforehand. Today's topic is the pros and cons of the Very Smart Brothers uh, sale or VSB. Most people know it as VSB who are followers of the blog. Other people may have just heard about the blog. Uh, because of the cell, but I'm going to share the pros and the cons of why this is a big deal for content creators of color. Before I hop into today's topic, which is going to be quite interesting actually, um, because I do have a personal perspective, I do have a lot to say on it, but it's also a very huge win for our community. It's a very huge win for um, content creators of color. So I am definitely going to, uh, sorry, closing out of the window, definitely going to share why this sale is such a big deal for our industry, our community. Before then, let me introduce myself and the group so you know who we are and then we will hop into today's topic. So my name is Bernetta Afrini, and I'm the organizer of the Houston African American Bloggers Association, otherwise known as HAB. HAB helps our members get paid, gain exclusive access to high connections, and stay up to date on the latest industry news, trends, and strategies. We do this because we know how challenging it is for African American voices to not only be heard, but to be respected and accepted in the online content creator world. So that's just a little bit about us. So let's kind of hop into today's topic. So we're talking about the pros and the cons of the Very Smart Brothers cell. Now by now, you probably, if you're in this world, and you pay attention to what's happening in this world, you know that Very Smart Brothers was bought by Gizmodo 
media. You remember that uh, the Motorola flip phones? Hello, Moto. <laughs> anyway, everybody wanted uh, a Motorola Razor, or well, at least when I was in college. That's that's been some years. But anyway, so Gizmodo Media is owned by Univision, Univision, Universal, NBC. You see the connection? So there's like a lot of chain of command here, but they are they were bought by Gizmodo Media. Gizmodo Media also bought the root, but very smart brothers will be under the root. So they will be, I guess you could say like a subsidiary of the root. And the root is a large online uh, website specifically to share black news, black um, culture, uh, black celebrity life, whatever the case may be. The root has um, the root is a it's, it's a very great it's a very good site. The managing editor, I believe, is she had a blog, the Black Snob. I don't know if she still has her personal blog, but the root is known for working with very big and well-known bloggers. So the fact that Very Smart Brothers is going to be under them, this is only adding um, credibility and new voices and exciting content to the root anyway. Now, it may have come as a shock to some, delight to others, and sell out to a few. Either way, it's a done deal. And I want to share for other bloggers how this is, why this is a big deal for all of us, okay? Yes, they are the ones who get the money. They are the ones who are going through the change, but this is opening the door for a lot of us to also be able to possibly have these types of opportunities presented to us in the future or near future, depending on where your platform is, okay? Um, and I, I want to share why this is a big deal for black bloggers in particular. Okay, so first this happens um, for other bloggers at a higher rate than ours. Like, Blog Her was one of the largest women uh, platforms, blog platforms out there, and then She Knows bought blog her. So blog her is now part of She Knows um, Media. And there are, uh, there are other websites as well that have been purchased and now owned by a larger media company. But this happens for non-black bloggers at a much, much higher rate than it happens for us. I want to share why this particular sale is a big deal for us. Now we do get offers, but the money usually isn't anywhere near the value of the platform we created, or they want to completely change everything or try to steal it from underneath us. So let's go back to it's not the money is not near the value. The value of the platform that you create has to supersede what you invested. So if you put in $50,000, but the value of your platform is only worth $50. You can't be mad that someone did not want to sell or someone does not want to buy your platform for $50,000. You did not create the value that they see that they could take what you've created and capitalize on that in a financial way. If your platform is not a financial, a positive financial decision for them, they're not going to pay you the $50,000 just because you invested $50,000. You have to be smart with the money you put into your platform so that you know that the money you are investing in your platform is creating a return on investment and it is creating value that other people see as, oh, this could be a profitable platform. I need to pay attention and watch what they do. So yes, sometimes they may not want to pay us for the value, but we also have to evaluate, are we creating value that is something of financial worth, or are we just creating something and we get a lot of likes, but it's not really a financial, not a sound financial investment. The other reason that I said is they try to completely change. 
One um, example is Issa Rae when she was trying to take Awkward Black Girl off of YouTube to TV. The first deal, I think it, was, it wasn't the first, it was maybe a couple of deals didn't work out because they wanted to change what she had created on YouTube, what was popular, what was uh, had a cult following. I've watched since the first episode of The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. Okay, so she had a distinct voice. But when she moved over to TV and she wanted to, uh, she was going to work with Shonda Rhimes, that didn't work out. The first um, time with HBO, it didn't work out because they wanted to change the main character to an Indian man and in India, Indian from India, okay, not Native American. And so they were going to completely change what she had created. She stuck to her guns. Now we have Insecure. <laughs> so it, were, it worked out, but it probably took her longer than she would have liked. And then the other thing is sometimes they try to steal from underneath us. The only way people can steal from underneath you is if you do not have legal structure in place, you do not have an operation in place that makes sure that the platform is running with or without you. A lot of times we jump into things because I want to be the boss, I want to be the CEO, I want to create something, and then you don't have any foundation. You don't have probably a business bank account. You probably don't even have it as a legal entity, as a DBA. You don't have any type of structure. You don't even have an attorney that you can have on retainer or that you can call and pay if you get into some type of trouble. The reason people can steal your platform from underneath you, you didn't have it protected to begin with. And if you are a savvy business owner, which you should be if you're trying to make money from your platform, then you would be able to know what to do in order to protect your platform. So those are three reasons that a lot of us usually do not get to sell our platforms to other people. Now, there are a few black bloggers who have either sold or been bought um, or got to keep their voice. So I, I shared the example of Issa Rae. In the end, she was able to keep her voice moving from YouTube to HBO. But there are some bloggers who have sold their blogs. So the very first person I've ever known, well, a black blogger that I've known, is Catherine Feeney. She's of Digital Undivided, but she had a fashion blog. And she sold her fashion blog, um, it was some years ago, probably 2012, 2013. I think it was like at the beginning of her creating Digital Undivided, which is uh, they host conf a conference and it's an organization to help more uh, African American and Latino women get into tech and get their tech companies funded. So she was doing these Twitter chats when Digital Undivided started and in one of the Twitter chats she explained why it's more important for you to sell a platform that has value instead of just shutting it down. Because we, as an African-American community, when we feel that I don't want to do this anymore, but we still have value in that business, we just shut it down. We just sell off the parts and close it instead of finding someone who could potentially buy it from us. And we make money off of us leaving the business that we no longer want to run. So Catherine Feeney was the first person to kind of open my eyes to that. The next person I met was Angel of Concrete Loop. That was um, like a pop culture type of blog, and she sold hers in 2015 or 14. I think I have, oops, sorry. I think I have her book up here. I probably should have, let me move this around. Um, I do have her book, get it somewhere on this bookcase. I have too many books. And watch is gonna be somewhere where I would have to stand up for it. Anyway, she wrote this book, and I have it somewhere. Where is it? 
she wrote this book because she she sold concrete loop. Um, I can't remember which company she sold it to, but now she makes jewelry from places around the world and she does more traveling. So she was able to build something and then she sold it and now she's getting to enjoy the life that she wants. I met her at Blogalicious a couple of years ago when they were in San Antonio. And one person who just closed down their blog, and she explained her reasoning, was Nicole Kane. She had a blog called NicoleBitchy.com, and instead of selling it, she just closed it down, and then she started XL Nicole. She had her reasons for closing it and, and not selling it. I'm, I'm pretty sure she had many offers. I'm pretty sure she had many offers when it come, when it came to her blog because she was one of the most trafficked uh, celebrity blogs in the black blogosphere. Now, these are just some examples of people that I have either met at a conference or that I've read who've had some type of um, sell or, or someone wanted to buy their platform. Um, it's funny because Angel and Issa were both at the same conference at Blogalicious um, when it was in San Antonio. Okay, so I do have some, it's weird, I do have some type of pass by we've met uh, with these ladies. But it just goes to show that the black blogosphere, as wide and as vast as it is, is still, when we have events, you still are able to meet these people that you admire and you follow online. Okay. Now, I've been reading Very Smart Brothers for years. I remember, gosh, it had to be like 2012 when I really kind of um, heard about them, and then probably 2013 where I became like a real um, reader of, of their blog is hilarious now they've added some female voices and some other voices but in the beginning it was just the two brothers uh, and they're not actually related but uh damon and panama but they they have this very distinct voice and i just thought it was very interesting reading from their point of view from a male point of view so i i am a reader of very smart brothers um probably one of my favorite is when I think it was Damon came to Houston last year for a um, bachelor party and <laughs> he gave his experience of Houston and it was the funniest experience. Um, so yeah, just go to verysmartbrothers.com and check that one out. It was hilarious. But anyway, let me get into why there's pros and cons to this self. Okay, so I'm reading the very smart brothers have sold their blog, but they are actually staying on as employees. So even though they are not the owners of the platform they created, they're still going to work there. Now, this is a very interesting turn of events for a lot of people because people feel if you sell something, then you should probably walk away. I think, and this is a personal opinion, that this was a very good decision for them. They worked nine years to create this platform to get two million views a month. Why walk away? Why walk away? Because you're now going to be the employees and not the employer. We live in a time where everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, everybody wants to be the girl boss, everyone wants to be whatever, some big title on a business card, but you're struggling. And what they said in their blog post when they explained the sale is that they were running a blog of that magnitude with literally one and a half people. If you have any platform, you already know how much work you have to put into it to keep it running on a consistent and regular basis, to keep consistent and fresh content out, to market it, to attend events, conferences, to speak, to create products. You know how much work it is. So 
to have something as big as their platform and only have one and a half people really able to give it their all, I really think it was a smart decision for them to stay on as employers because now they get steady income on something that they created. So even though the, some people may see them as sellouts, what they are doing, they can now establish themselves financially in their personal life and not have to worry about a lot of the administrative side of running their blog. Now, earlier I stated that I was at an event this morning and I was talking to two of my friends after the event was over. And it was a very, it was a very great, interesting conversation. And we brought up how everyone is not meant to be an entrepreneur or they have pretty branding, but they have maybe a negative bank account. And then I mentioned at Black Enterprise Entrepreneur Summit that the theme is seen there was that everybody wants to be CEO, but then you're CEO, but you're the only employee, so you're not technically CEO. What I'm getting at is as a community, we all want to own something. That's great that we want to own something, but sometimes we have to know when we've reached our maximum capacity with our knowledge, our skill level, our money, when we've reached our maximum capacity, we have to be able to merge, and that's what you know. my friends and I talked about this morning, we have to be able to merge with other people who are gonna help us continue to grow. Because when you max out, there's nothing else you can do. And it doesn't matter how hard you try, you hit the wall and there's nothing else you can do. So the best thing some people can do is to merge or sell or be acquired by someone else so that they can continue to grow the platform that they've created. I know it's hard. You, you sat there and you've given it your blood, your sweat, your tears, your money, your time. And then for someone to now come in and tell you what to do. I know it's going to feel like a gut punch. It will. But in the end, do you want to have your pride that you own this and stay broke? Or do you want to go ahead and come on board with someone else make money for your family, have the money to do what you need to professionally and continue to grow that brand under someone else's umbrella. That's a decision a lot of people make when you get to a certain level with your blog or with your YouTube channel or with your whatever you're creating, okay? So I'm going to share three pros and three cons from this cell that I see. Okay, so let's start with positive. <laughs> so the first pro that I see is they created something worth being sought after because Gizmodo wasn't the first person to approach them to buy Very Smart Brothers. Um, they said that they've had multiple offers and they had to go through the process to decide which company they wanted to, um, to sell to. So they created something of value. I stated it earlier. You have to create something that people see a value that they can put a dollar sign on. Just because you put in $50,000 doesn't mean someone else is gonna see $50,000 worth of value. You have to create something that people can put a dollar sign to. Second thing, this opens the door for more black bloggers to access larger media companies so they actually get paid for the work that we do. Now that Very Smart Brothers is owned by Gizmodo, they're under the root, they can pay writers an actual salary. Well, probably not a salary, but you know, if you're a freelance writer, you can actually get paid because we all know the, the trouble that Ebony is having paying their freelancers because Ebony is going through a little bit of a, a, a transition. They were bought last year by an actual company in Austin, Texas. Um, I can't remember the name of it. So they're going through a transition, but they had a very public beef on Twitter about how the freelancers weren't getting paid. So this is a great opportunity because let's be honest, Gizmodo, Univision, they're probably, well, Univision we know is Hispanic owned. Gizmodo, it sounds like it's Hispanic owned. 
they have the money. We do too. We have one point, what, one point one trillion dollars in spending, but we don't use that spending capital. We don't use that one trillion in spending capital for investment. In the Hispanic culture, they invest in their businesses. So Gizmodo has the money to make sure that very smart brothers can pay the writers who come on to their platform and write for them. This is an opportunity for people to pitch to this platform and get your, your name in front of a lot more readers and then get paid to do it. Because how many of you are pitching to other websites but they can't afford to pay you because they can't even afford to pay themselves? You have to think about that. It's hard to rebuke large capital backing to further your brand. Exactly. You. Why turn down money? <laughs> if, it's, if it's legal, if it's going to help your business, and you have to kind of swallow your, your ego, because it's not pride, it's ego. You have to swallow your ego a little bit and, you know, accept this money and move into a separate role. Why not? Too many of us want to be owners, but we're, we're sitting on a broken foundation, negative bank account, and no customers or no readers. That's not a business. So we can't fault them for being smart financially. The third pro that I see is as an industry, this cell is shifting us into real media companies that have that share black experience with actual black voices on a much larger scale, and then it could still pay as writers. So let me kind of break that down a little bit. I'm going to talk about black Twitter in a couple of weeks, but I think it was the LA Times hired a writer to cover black Twitter. The writer was not black. Why would you have a writer cover black Twitter and they're not black? Why not give the opportunity to a black writer? That would happen if it was a black company that had a say in some of the hiring. Now that Very Smart Brothers is now part of a larger company, they can have a say on the type of writers that are hired to work for them. They are now part of a media company that helps to put more people in a position to not only be writers, but maybe editors or um, social media managers or some other, you know, uh, advertising manager other parts of the of the larger scheme of the business. They are now in a position to be exactly the company that can open the door for a lot of other content creators who are working hard every single day to get known, to get seen. At the Black Enterprise um, Summit, they were talking about how a lot of our companies can't get certain contracts because we're too small and we don't have the resources to um, handle to handle those types of contracts, especially when it comes to media companies. Like the event I went to this morning, the media company that was the, the speakers, it was a lot of the employees from the media company, or they're not a media company agency. They got this campaign with Michelle Obama for her um, initiative to help more students sign up for college, sign up for financial aid, and so forth. They're not a minority company. And I don't even know if they hire minority subcontractors. But they were able to get the contract because they had the resources in place, they could operate at that capacity, they had the money, and they had the number of people. Too many of our companies too many of our companies are not in that position. So we get mad at places like that agency for getting the contract, but we can't even go up to Kinko's and run off copies because we don't have the money for it. When we put ourselves in a position to tap into a larger financial pool that opens up doors for ourselves and it opens up doors for other people that we can help along the way. Now, I'm going to switch to the cons, okay? Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the cons because we need to see this as a great 
opportunity for the the guys who created Very Smart Brothers. This is a wonderful opportunity for them. This is a great learning um, case study for the rest of us. So there are cons. I will share them, but I'm not going to dwell on these cons because in the end, this is a good thing for all of us. And we have to see it as, even though it didn't directly happen to us, the potential and the possibility is now there, is now there. Okay, so con, they aren't the boss anymore. They are now the employees. I know that's gonna be everybody's first con. They now have to listen to the man. They now have to listen to what someone else tells them to do. Good leaders are great followers. Good leaders know how to take direction. You cannot be a good leader if you don't know how to be a great follower. This is going to be an adjustment for them, for anybody, to now have to punch a time clock and, and listen to someone else. But that's going to be the kind for some people. They're not the boss anymore. Um, they have to deal with the fallout because as a community, there's always a few who would judge and vilify others for wanting to grow, expand, and do better. That was something else my friends and I talked about this morning after the event, is that we are the first to critique each other on something that we're doing. Instead of saying congratulations to Panama and, and Damon, there are people, you're a sellout, why did you do this? Instead of seeing it for what it is, you're telling them they should have stayed in a situation where they were doing all this work, not getting the pay that they probably wanted, and that they were probably spinning their wheels trying to keep up with everything. I mean, in the um, blog post that, that they wrote, it stated that they have hundreds of emails come in every single day. You know, people are wanting them to speak. They're trying to churn out content. They are, and then Panama works a full-time job. Well, he did. <laughs> he, he was able to leave that job and now work for Very Smart Brothers full time. But that left just Damon to work for everything, to do everything for Very Smart Brothers. And for people to sit there and vilify them for a decision to get paid on a platform that they created is stupid. It, just, it really is because you would want them to just stop at their max capacity because you don't want them to sell out to someone else. We don't have that many media companies that could have bought them. So they did what they could with who approached them. They, they went through all the different companies and this is the one that they felt would be the best for them and for their brand. And at the end of the day, them, and their brand is way more important than them staying broke and doing all this stuff for free because you want it. If you're not paying them for their work, then you really have no say in the decision that they made. The third con that some people may say, even though they said they aren't going to be any big changes, corporations always have a way of changing the game overnight. So one thing that, you know, they're probably just going to watch over the next few months is what is Gizmodo going to do to Very Smart Brothers? Are, there, are they going to leave it the way it is? Now, we do know their comment section is going to change. They said that in the blog post. But is Gizmodo going to tell them what to do? Or is The Root going to tell them what to do? Or will they have autonomy where they get to use the admin structure of the bigger company they're under, the resources, but they still get to run and manage it their, the way they want to. So that's something else to consider. Okay, so let me go back over the pros. The pros, they created something worth being sought after to buy. Two, this opens the door for more black bloggers to access larger media companies so they actually get paid for the work that we do. And three, as an industry, this cell is shifting us into real media companies that share black experience with actual black voices on a much larger scale. 
And then the cons. They aren't the boss anymore. They're the employees. Two, they have to deal with the fallout because as a community, we always have people who want to judge and vilify others for growing, expanding, and wanting to do better. And then three, even though they say there's not going to be any big changes, we just have to wait and see what the Root and Gizmodo will do with their Smart Brothers platform. Now, personally, I see this as a great opportunity for them. I wish them all the best. I'm still going to read and laugh at um, the posts they create because they do have excellent content. I mean, some of the funniest content I read comes from Very Smart Brothers. But this also is something we have to think about. As black bloggers, we have to see things from a different perspective. We're no longer hobbyists. We're no longer sitting you know, in the corner of our bedroom, hacking away at night outside of our nine to five. This is an industry. We can create businesses. We can sell. We can be acquired. We can merge. That's what real businesses do. Or it wouldn't be classes called mergers and acquisitions. <laughs> that wouldn't even be a term in accounting if it didn't happen. We are now becoming an industry. And black platforms are now being viable businesses that can be part of a larger um, a larger company. Now, will everyone want to sell or can sell? No. But the ones who have the opportunity, we cannot sit there and tear them down for the opportunity that they have positioned themselves um, to be in in the first place. Okay. We need to have our own exit strategy when we decide we want something bigger and better for our platform, or we decided, I don't want to do this anymore. What am I going to do with my blog? Do I just shut everything down? What do I do? You need an exit strategy. If you are a real entrepreneur, if you are a real business owner, you would know what an exit strategy is and you would have an exit strategy in place. For your platform. Um, this cell is exactly why attending Pab Blog Bootcamp is a must. You are going to actually meet people who run businesses based on platforms that you see each and every day. You are going to learn about the actual business side of this industry. Also, we are going to have blog tank. Now, we're going to send out the information to people who have already registered to attend because in order to go into the tank, you have to be a registered attendee. Blog tank is going to be this fishbowl where five people get to come in front of a panel of judges and get some real feedback and suggestions to help them grow their platform. The winning person, um, I don't know the term, the winning person will get $100 to help with their blog, their podcast, or their YouTube channel. The purpose of Blog Tank is because we really want people to shift into just being hobbyists and to create content so that you can be seen as an influencer within your niche, that people come to you that people want to work with you, that people want to hire you. I'm using the same um, phrase with different words on purpose. The entire point of our bootcamp this year is so that you can take content that you create and position yourself as an influencer. Sometimes we need a little bit of money to do that. And that's what Blog Tank is going to do, help you get that little bit of money to either buy ads or attend some networking event or whatever, or even buy your domain. Some people are still on a free site. So if you have to buy a domain, you have to buy hosting. $100 could do that for you, especially if you use Habs Bluehost affiliate link. Um, <laughs> I will put that out there. We are an affiliate for Bluehost. So if you do need hosting, you can contact us and we will give you our affiliate link and you will probably get a much better deal than going through Bluehost um, on their own. Anyway, 
We look forward to seeing everyone at Have Blog Bootcamp 2017. This is our third annual blog bootcamp. It is always the first Saturday of August every year. This year it is August 5th at the Houston Business Lounge, which is a black owned co working and event space. We are sponsored by Search for Her Existence, otherwise known as She, which is a professional leadership development firm for women. Also, she is a great IP attorney, intellectual property. And then Blog Tank is sponsored by Powerhouses United, which is a Houston based leadership and business development company that hosts a biannual conference every year. If you come into the blog tank this year, you get a chance to enter to the pitch competition for Powerhouses United. Now they're gonna give out a lot more money than we're giving out. But you, if you want to have more money for your platform, then you may want to enter our blog tank so you also have the chance to enter the Powerhouses United pitch competition that will be held in November of this year. So that's all I wanted to share with you when it comes to the pros and cons of the Very Smart Brother um, sale. I want you to see this as a great positive thing for our entire industry, our entire community, because this means that we can continue to create things and make it valuable so other people see the value in it who's just not our readers and supporters. Before I leave for the day, are there any questions? And make sure you go to Houston African American Bloggers.com to sign up for this year's boot camp. We are like three weeks away, I believe. One, two, three, three weeks away from the boot camp. You do not want to miss it. Our keynote speaker, Tristan Sutton, our workshop speaker, Juan, he's also doing Hispanicize Texas, which is the week before us. We're going to go and support there as well. Then we have our content and technology, content create, curation and technology panel, Denise, Gary, and Jonathan. Um, Denise, is, I just saw her this morning. And then you're going to have um, Crystal and myself talk about how to create traditional media from your blog. And then we're going to have Blog Tank. It is an investment for you in your, in your platform to attend things that are in your city. There's no reason to leave and go somewhere else when there is something here available for you to meet local influencers, learn from them, and actually take lessons away from people who have done exactly what you want to do. So in that case, if there aren't any questions, because I've been reading the comments, they were, they were more comments than questions. I will see you guys next Friday at noon. I don't remember what I want to speak about. I wrote it somewhere. What is next Friday? Oh, I think I'm going to talk about the rise of microblogging. I think that's the next week's topic. So I bid you adieu. Thank you for joining me on your lunch hour, and I will see you next Friday for more of our weekly live stream as we share information with you. You get to know more about us, and we hope to see you at Hab Blog Bootcamp 2017 because. It is in your best interest to learn from people who have already walked the path that you were on. All right, I will see you next Friday.